Hey everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be speaking about the 2003 Illinois State Quarter. The statehood quarter, there's a few of them that are worth way more than the rest, and I'm super excited to cover the sort of upper tier of these Illinois quarters in addition to just explaining the design and the history behind the coin, how it came to be. But we'll be going over everything from the different types of strikes to the error coins and how they're formed that are worth so much more than the average 25 cent spendable circulating commemorative. So let's go right to the presentation for the full picture. And here we've got the 2003 Illinois Statehood Quarter, um, one of the more interesting designs that commemorates both George Washington, the first president, and then 16th president Abraham Lincoln. That was his birthplace. But if we go back for a moment on the design, you see sort of the rural Illinois farm uh, scape and then the skyline of Chicago, um, which is going to not be the capital city. The capital city is Springfield, but it's one of the major cities within the state of Chicago, obviously, and a lot more well-known than that um, city. In terms of the key dates and varieties, you're really looking for the Wisconsin extra high and low leaf, and then the double die reverses on D.C., Wyoming, and Minnesota, but there are a few other ones. Illinois um, is the 21st state. They had ironed out a lot of the problems with some of the mint errors, but they we're still strong and we'll be going over those in just a moment. In terms of the ones that are conditional rarities, you're going to really need almost perfect coins before they're worth sending to PCGS for grading. And if you can get a Mint State 68, the top end is going to be 250. But I generally go pretty quickly through just the conditional stuff. Here it's 500, slightly rarer for the uh, Denver Mint mark, just because um, you know a regular coin, that's not really what we're looking for. Um, with the clad proof and the silver proof, going to have similar values where it really does not warrant you grading these on your own. Um, the value just is not there. What is interesting is looking for these when there is something slightly wrong, and I just think it's really cool to sort of commemorate some of these that have occurred. There are a few that are struck on five cent planchets, so instead of having been struck on a nickel, they are struck on, or, or you know, using the Jefferson um, and the regular Monticello to strike them. Uh, they end up with the Illinois, you know, between the dies a nickel planchet and it gets struck this one sold for $840 and you can tell you know if you have something that looks a little bit misshapen you're probably not you know seeing things it's likely to be a five cent planchet and then maybe potentially could be a dime or penny planchet those would be extremely rare because after 2002 the the mint like I said earlier gets a little bit stricter about their process this is not technically something that is legal tender but three canceled coins there was some type of mint error on these coins and the mint decided that they wouldn't be releasing them so they canceled them uh, and they were stuck together so similar to like a bonded coin error but this conglomeration of three Lincoln quarters or you know not Lincoln quarters they're Illinois quarters sold for $220 then there's also some less rare Errors, if you have one like this, you want to look out for improperly annealed planchets in the annealing process in which the coins are going to be heated. Sometimes the temperature is a little bit off or sometimes it stays in that chamber for a little bit too long. And some of the underlying metal, remember that this is there is clad layers and a copper core um, that some of that metal floats to the top. And in this case, or the back, you know, to the surface, really, um, thirty-five dollars. I mean, it probably wasn't worth certifying, but it's still an interesting error. And if you have a really nice mint state coin, uh, maybe it's just cool toning, but there could be a chance that could be improperly annealed, or you could have a situation where the reverse or obverse clad layer or both is missing. Um, this is the sort of copper core again. You can see this one sold for $160. Uh, people paid up for it, but it's gonna be, you know, potentially that the uh, heating wasn't enough where the clad layer fell off, it didn't bond properly. Uh, maybe the strip, you know, it outran it, but um, either way, when you have a clad layer missing coin or one side of a coin it looks totally like copper when it should be sort of this copper nickel the the nickel color um it could be quite valuable like this one is so those are some of the cool errors i always think that those are really fun to highlight there are not going to be any major varieties um it's you know there's not even some minor ones i there's only five state quarters that don't have any documented 
doublings or something interesting going on, whether it's on the front or the back. Um, it's just one of the few that don't, so I always try to bring that to your attention if there is. But yeah, that's what we've got for the 2003 Illinois Statehood Quarter. Interesting coin, no varieties to look for, but it's also good to know that there haven't been any documented. That doesn't mean you couldn't find one, but none that I can point you in the direction of. Um, and an interesting, yeah, coin. Hope that you either get some really nice condition ones or maybe you can find an error that's been overlooked uh, because the 2003 and on is tougher to find and people pay up more for those. Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like the video, comment, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and some other social media platforms. You can also go to my main channel website, treasuretownyt.com, to learn more about the channel and sort of stay in contact. I also will eventually host all of these videos on coinsmetalscards.com, which will be both news, marketplace, and coin information. I do have the goal of eventually getting pretty much every U.S coin, date, mint mark, denomination on the channel with a similar video to the one that you just watched, and that will likely all be hosted there. Uh, and then I also have treasuretowncoins.com, which is sort of my coin dealing wing, coin dealing only entity that is a little bit less focused on content production. So thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. I also have videos that are not just the date uh, mint mark denomination recap in this format, uh, so you can check some of those out, and I'll yeah have fun seeing you there.